name is Glenn Smith, founder and CEO of Fragile to Agile. The topic for today's video is SOA and microservices. So let's start with first our opening position, um, and that is that uh, microservices is actually SOA done right. I'll come back to justify that statement by the end of the video. Uh, but let's start with, first of all, what is SOA? Well, SOA stands for Service Oriented Architecture. But the first thing I want to stress is, as it describes here, that SOA is a design approach. It is fundamentally about a new way of approaching the design of solutions for an enterprise in a much more modular or componentized fashion. It has its origins in component-based development in the 90s, uh, functional decomposition in the 80s, and modular systems programming. Um, it is not about a particular technology approach, WS asterisk standards or um, any of those particular technology standards. It is fundamentally about a new design paradigm of how we design solutions. Okay, um, why is it so important? Well, together with its allied business design approach, a discipline of business process management, it's at the heart of the design of a new approach that delivers a much more agile organization where it's much simpler to change processes dynamically in source and outsource capabilities and operate in a de uh, industry deconstructed model. Um, for more information on business process management and so, please see our separate video in our uh, YouTube channel on that topic. Um, okay, so now moving on to a little bit of history of, in, of integration and integration's evolution over time to give SOA some context. So we started with integration approaches of what's generally referred to as point-to-point, -point, where if application A needed to go to application B, we built an interface between them, and then if application A talked to application C, you built an in another interface between them. And the result over that ended up in what generally is referred to as a spaghetti architecture or furball architecture with a whole pile of interconnections all around the place that made the overall environment in an organization incredibly fragile and uh, brittle and difficult to change. I don't see anybody advocating for a return to this approach. That evolved then into what's called enterprise application integration, where we put a piece of middleware, typically a message broker, in between. And then if application A wanted to talk to application C, common functionality like logging, and uh, message transformation, etc., were delivered in this piece of middleware. But fundamentally, of uh, application A wanted to talk to application B, we still built an interface specifically for that purpose for application A to talk to application B. And if A wanted to talk to C, we built another interface. So it was an improvement. We now had what's called a hub and spoke model, where we had a central point for monitoring and everything going through. Uh, uh, a single point for common functionality to be implemented, but still we were building effectively dedicated interfaces between them. And it was still designed from an application-centric perspective. So then move on to a service-oriented architecture. This is a real paradigm change. Um, here, we did not design any more uh, interfaces for a specific application's need, but rather we looked at the whole overall environment in a business and designed a set of services that could be consumed by anywhere else in the organization um, to perform proved business functions. So it's fundamentally a different way of thinking about solutions um, and designing services to deliver a much more agile ecosystem. And then came, and I use the word then came loosely because I, we don't believe microservices architecture is that fundamentally different to SOA, um, microservices. Um, first thing I want to point out is that really a microservices architecture um, differs if it can be used that word from so, but really just two fundamental points of view. Um, that it, it, it adopts a much lighter weight, uh, lighter weight protocol, like HTTP rather than WS asterisk standard, etc. And typically it's viewed as not having an ESP, though I'd like to express that as saying, in fact, what it's saying is that there are smart endpoints with dumb pipes um, rather than necessarily there being a view on whether there is an ESP or no ESP. So there are a couple of differences that people see, if you like, um, and why they've now come, coined this new term of microservices architecture. But in my view, they're just technical implementation details and the overall design paradigm has not in fact changed. And if you look at what they have in common, it's much more than what they have uh, different between SOA and microservices, even if you do believe they're different. So common concerns that everyone would agree in both SOA and microservices architecture proponents they must be independently deployable, encapsulate the data they own, uh, the service interfaces are separate from the implementation, uh, they're language and platform independent, they're loosely coupled, they're designed for multi-use, i.e. they're designed independent of any particular consumer. Microservices architecture and SOA, even if you believe in the difference, share all of these things in common with only uh, some technical implementation details being different. 
The other critical difference between them is surface granularity, but I'll come to that one in a minute, because I first want to address this big point that people uh, talk about a lot, is the difference about whether or not to use an ESB or no ESB. Um, a lot of advocates of microservices architecture would say that the critical difference between it and, and so is that you use no ESB. I'd like to explore that a little bit because what I actually think it's saying um, is that we don't use some of the higher order functions that came with ESBs like business process execution language or BPEL orchestration, WS choreography and some of those things. Um, but most ESBs are built on message brokers and you know, microservices architecture requires some way and some uh, dumb pipe even for, uh, for it to be delivered and for these uh, communications to exist between the two endpoints. Um, so I'd like to rephrase that as saying what we're actually doing is saying even if you use an ESB for microservices architecture, you don't use some of the higher or functions. My danger with throwing it out, or the approach of throwing it out, or my concern at least, is that some of the common functional, uh, functions like logging, security, monitoring, etc., which are very valid and, and useful functions of an ESB, will get thrown away. It's uh, throwing away the baby with the bathwater, if you like. So in my view, it's not a question of abandoning an ESB to move from badly implemented SOA to properly implemented SOA microservices architecture. It's understanding what functionality of an ESB you should use and what you should stay away from. Um, and usually, uh, um, what results in inappropriate use of the ESB is two core problems that I believe um, have resulted in the bad name for SOA. And they are, first of all, not understanding the correct granularity of your services um, and secondly, not understanding the difference between a process orchestration and a service orchestration, or in technical terms, what functionality should be implemented on a BPMS or a business process management suite, and what functionality should be implemented on your integration platform, be that an ESP or a message broker or enterprise in uh, application integration platform. Um, so let's look at the issue of service granularity first. Um, but in a simple overview, we kind of know inherently that uh, process loan mortgage uh, origination is a is a full end-to-end -end process in an organization and not a service so it's too coarse to be an enterprise service on the other extreme update customer first name update customer second name etc are too fine-grained somewhere in between those two is the right uh, is the right granularity but finding out what that is is a non-trivial exercise and requires quite a bit of rigor to be brought to the design process but once you do so it will effectively deliver a microservices architecture for you. It will deliver the services to the right level of granularity. And while we're on the topic of granularity, I just want to stress my biggest issue with microservices architecture is the term itself. I understand why people want to adopt it to move away from uh, a bad reputation, which we all have to agree out there, so uh, largely on bad implementations has got, um, because most of those bad implementations were the result of implementing two coarse services the term microservices uh, uh, emerged. The danger in it is that it is just as bad to go too low and the term micro in my view is, uh, at least out of fear, is going to let people go far too low and do those update customer first name, update customer service, second name, etc. services. So it shouldn't be really microservices, should be right sized services, though I appreciate that's a bit of a mouthful. The other thing I think that, that that's critical to get right is to understand when what should be implemented on an enterprise service bus or your integration platform and what should be on a business process management platform. Um, and if you get that right, you will avoid inherently using some of the more complex functionality, which in our view should probably not be exist in an enterprise service bus like BPEL. In fact, the hint is in the term itself, business process execution language. It's inherently a process execution language and not a service orchestration language. Um, attempting to implement processes on an ESB instead of on a BPMS, um, is what has largely, in our view, resulted in the bad name for SOA. And by way of one example, one of our clients, uh, before we had arrived, I hasten to point out, had implemented incorrectly a, a function that should have been implemented in a business process management tool on an ESB, and it cost them $40 million. This was a legal compliance function, so identical across different businesses in the same industry segment to one of our other clients, if you join in afterwards, we implemented exactly the same process in half a million dollars on the appropriate tool business process management as opposed to the enterprise service bus or integration bus. So to finish up, if you're doing so right, you understand the service granularity, you understand what functionality 
uh, you should use an ESB and what you shouldn't use in order to make it effectively a dump pipe with some common functionality in the middle. And you understand what functionality should be on a business process management suite, what should be on an enterprise service bus. Then all we're talking about is a couple of differences or, of arguments around what protocol should be used and lower level technical details is the only difference between SOA and microservices. In our language, microservices is SOA done right. Thank you very much and I hope it was of interest and value to you.